top rated book on Amazon is the mental handbook. You want the physical book? This one right here for free. Click the link below and let's get to work on your game. DreAllDay.com Here we are everybody. Dre Bald on DreAllDay.com. What's going on YouTube? Today's topic, what do coaches look for at tryouts? High school tryouts, college tryouts, professional team tryouts. They all look for the exact same things. There's four specific things coaches look for at tryouts. I'm going to tell you what they are right off the top and then I'm going to explain each one in detail for those of you who want to know exactly what I mean. They are in order. Talent, players who can play, coachability, and need. In order. Talent, players who can play, coachability, and need. Now just to introduce myself for those who don't know me, my name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day. As far as basketball goes, Start playing basketball at 14. I was a terrible player. Tried out three years straight in high school. Didn't make it past the first day. Finally made it as a senior. I'm 6'4", for those who can't tell by watching this video. 6'4", I was probably maybe 6'2", 6'3", at that point in high school. Who knows? I played center. That one year I played in high school, averaged two points per game my senior year of high school. Went to a college that was a two-year athletically, four-year academically. Played there, did okay that year, got recruited that summer to go to a Division III school. I finished my college career playing at a Division III school. Didn't do anything crazy there. I was like 9.6 rebounds, something like that. Through my college career at an NCAA Division III school where I'd still never played the guard position all four years in college because, again, I was at a lower level, so the players weren't as big. I didn't play at a higher level. In 2004 was when I graduated. I worked for a year at... I worked at, where I worked first? I worked at Foot Locker as an assistant manager, and I worked at Bally Total Fitness on gym memberships. 2005, I started my professional career by going to an exposure camp in the summer of 2005. The camp doesn't exist anymore, the camp that I went to. Played great at that camp, showed my game, got to play my, my game, quote unquote, like a lot of players like to say, showed my game, got my career started in the summer of 2005. And I played not over nine years, I played eight different countries. I had some years where I got deals, sometimes where I didn't have deals. You can read all about that on my website at dreallday.com slash basketball. And now what I do, I work with business professionals, entrepreneurs, and athletes like yourself on mental toughness, confidence, discipline, getting yourself seen, heard, and known. These are all things that you need if you're gonna be a successful basketball player, a successful football player, a successful librarian, successful electrician. So what we're gonna talk about today is what coaches look for at tryouts now that I introduce myself. Players ask me this question all the time. I get players who are in eighth grade going to high school, like what is the freshman coach going to look for? I get players who are 25 going to an overseas exposure camp that they invested $500 in asking me what do the teams look for at tryouts. So this video right here is for all of you because all coaches look for the four things that I told you at the top of this video. And I'm going to explain each one in detail. Again, let me tell you what they are and I'm going to go into each one right now. Number one is talent. Number two is players who can play. Number three is coachability. Number three, number four is need. Number one, talent. Basketball coaches want talent. Basketball scouts want talent. Basketball agents want talent. Basketball players <laughs> want talent. Players want talent. Coaches want talent. Everybody, the fans want talent. Number one thing that will get you on a basketball team, that will get you attention, get you exposure as a basketball player is talent. Now, what exactly do I mean by talent? Talent means you watch somebody play and they have some natural ability to do their thing. Not to say that they didn't work on it, but they have some ability to do their thing that other people just don't have. They got a skill that other people just don't have. Listen, if I show you how to dribble the ball back and forth between the right hand and left hand, we work on it every day all summer, I think I can teach pretty much any basketball player how to do that. That's not a talent. I'm talking about the talent like a skill where somebody can just go yo-yo the ball all over the place, shoot fadeaway threes and step backs, dunk on people, grab every rebound that comes off the rim. They just seem to do it naturally. It's just a natural flow to it. So talent I see more as kind of like an art rather than a science, as in there's no one particular way, correct way to explain talent, but it's just something that you can feel when somebody just has a talent for doing something. Some people say I have a talent for getting on camera and speaking or getting in front of an audience and speaking. Some people have said that to me. Just to use myself as an example, and guess what? All of you have a talent too. It might be in basketball, it might be in something else. Who knows? It's not for me to say, but it is for you to find out. So a talent is a natural ability that people have. Talent will get you noticed at basketball tryouts. For example, let me tell you, let me just use it. I'm gonna use several examples in this video to explain what I mean. Let's, talent is the number one thing that will get you on a team as well. Because players come to me and say, well, what if I'm short? What if I can't do this? What if I'm not good at defense? What if I'm not good at passing? What if I like to drive, but I'm not that great of a shooter? What if I'm good at everything, but not great at anything? What is, what is it that's gonna get me on the team? Number one thing is talent, and I'll explain this. 
Let's say I'm coaching the Portland Trailblazers and I hold an open tryout. I already know I got CJ McCollum and Damian Lillard signed the contracts, but Stephen Curry shows up to the tryout. Is Stephen Curry going to make the team? Of course he's going to make the team. But wait, you got Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum on the team, Dre. How is, how are you going to put Stephen Curry on the team too? I don't know. I'll figure that out later, how we're going to make it work. But Stephen Curry's going to make the team. Why? Stephen Curry can fucking play. <laughs> Stephen Curry got some damn talent. He's going to make the team. We're going to figure it out. I don't care if Steph Curry and Chris Paul and who's somebody else and Kyrie Irving and Russell Westbrook all show up to the tryout. Listen, all four of them making the team with Damian Lillard, with CJ McCollum. Me and my assistant coaches will figure that out when it's time for us to start playing the games, how we going to make all that work. But they all making my team. They come to my tryout. Why? Because they all got talent. Talent will get you noticed is the number one thing. It don't have nothing to do with you being short, tall, Asian, young, old. Do you have talent? You got talent, I'm noticing you, I'm remembering you, and I'm giving you a call back or I'm putting your name on a list, whatever your, whatever situation you are as far as getting on teams at that tryout. Show your talent. So if you are a short player, you feel like you're undersized. Listen, if you got some damn talent, your talent can outweigh your lack of height or your lack of weight or your lack of whatever it is you think is a weakness for you heading into tryouts. When you have talent, that will overcome that. So number one thing gets you noticed is talent. Number one thing coaches look for is talent. Number two. Ability to play basketball. Now, you might say, well, what's the difference between ability to play basketball and talent? Right? What's the difference between the two? Ability to play basketball is a learned skill. I consider talent to be something that's a little bit more natural. Yes, you can work to enhance your talents, and a lot of people do. You look at, let's say, a LeBron or a Kobe Bryant or any, a bunch of players in the NBA, even the guys who you don't even know their names, they work to, to enhance the talent that they have. Because to get to that level, you've got to have some level of talent. Even if you just got height, that's a talent. Second thing, second point here is ability to play basketball. This is a learned skill. Players come to me often and say, well, Dre, I do really good when I'm playing pickup at the park or when I'm playing one-on-one -on -one with my friends and when I get in the real game with the referees and the coaches and we're running plays and we got the uniforms on and all the fans in the stands and we're playing against a team who I've never seen before, I don't play as well. That's because you don't have the game experience. That's one reason. Now, maybe you don't have the confidence. Maybe you just don't have as much game as you thought you had because your friends are garbage. Whatever the situation is, you don't have enough game experience. You need more game experience playing against players who can play, playing with referees on the court, playing when all the lights are on, playing when coaches are running plays, playing when everybody got the uniforms on. You need more experience doing that to get better at playing in games. You can't get better at playing in games from playing pickup. Well, actually, you can get better from playing pickup, but pickup is a game within itself. You can't get better from, I don't think, from just playing people one-on-one -on -one or just playing with your friends at the park. Whatever the situation is, if you feel like you play great in one setting, but you play terrible in the games, like you're great playing three on three with your boys or you're great playing in practice with the team, but you're terrible in the actual games. Listen, doing more of the thing you were great at is not going to get you better in the games. You just got to play in more games. Now, if there's some kind of hack to this, some hack that if you do this, this can simulate playing in the game. I don't think there is. In my opinion, there is no hack to that. You got to just get on the court and play in more games. Now, how can you get yourself more comfortable from one game to the next? Let's say you only got one game a week for 10 weeks, but you want to get better you know, by the end of the season. The first game, you were terrible. You don't want to have to use all 10 games as a, a training ground where you just garbage all 10 games. You got to wait till next season. What can you do? There is something you can do. You can work on your damn game in between the games. The more skills you develop when you working out by yourself or with your trainer or your partner, whatever situation is you work out, the more skills you develop, the more confident you'll be in your abilities. That's just how it works. Confidence is something that is practice. Confidence is a practice. It's not a thing. It's not an object to acquire. It's a practice, which means once you have confidence, you got to keep doing the things to sustain the confidence. You can't just get confident in something, then never do it again. You're going to lose your confidence. Why? Because you have no ability. So you must have the ability. The more you practice, the more you work on your game, the more stuff you're going to be able to do on the court. Even if it's just by yourself working on your game, you'll get into a 5 on 5 and have more, more belief because you practiced it, because you know you worked on it. So ability to play basketball, that's the second point that I'm saying coaches look for. Ability to play means do you know how to set a screen and roll to the basket? Do you know how to defend the screen? Do you know how to talk on defense when your teammate gets screened? Do you know what it means to box out? Do you know what it means when the coach says run a motion offense without him having to explain to everybody what a motion offense is? Do you understand this stuff? Do you know what a good shot is? Do you know what a bad shot is? Do you know what it means when you drive to the basket and there are three people around you, that means you should pass it and stop trying to do a Kyrie Irving move? Do you understand these things? Do you have an understanding of how to play the game of basketball? Again, the basic stuff, boxing out, like rebounding, shooting when you is a good shot 
if you happen to catch the ball behind the three-point line and you're wide open but you're not a three-point shooter do you know that you're not supposed to shoot that shot and you figure out a way to keep the offense running pass it to somebody else and not force up a shot that you know you can't make that you know you're not good at just because you're wide open even if somebody in the audience is yelling shoot it shoot it shoot it what are you going to do do you play the game within yourself you ever heard that phrase he plays the game within himself or she plays the game within herself you know what that means that means you do what you're capable of doing and you don't try to do things that you're not capable of doing if you are not a great ball handler don't try to dribble between two and three people if you're not a three-point shooter and you catch the ball wide open behind the three-point line it doesn't mean you have to fucking shoot the ball if you're not a good defender you probably shouldn't point out the best scorer on the other team and say oh i got him because you want to try to prove a point and then get your ass bust and get embarrassed and don't make the basketball team do you play within your limits every basketball player save for i don't know lebron james they all got limits or right, so certain things everybody just can't do all right everybody can't guard chat everybody can't guard steph curry and everybody can't be lebron james do you play within your limits do you make the right moves do you box out again do you know how to play team defense do you understand the basics of team offense do you know the difference between a good shot and a bad shot do you know what good basketball is and bad basketball is again this is not anything that's specific to any one coach or specific to any one league or even any one country or language or male or female black white the hood the suburbs none of that this is just best basketball basics if you don't understand this stuff this is how you this is how you fix that problem you need to play in more basketball games you got to play in more games how do you get to play in more games by working on your game the more skills you have the more confident you'll be, which means the more games you'll put yourself in, because I don't think anybody can force you to play a game of basketball, the more games you'll put yourself into, and then the more confidence you'll have when you get on the court, then you can develop that experience, word I'm looking for, that game experience when you're out there on the court playing. But you got to get the game experience. The only way you learn how to box out, the only way you learn what a good pass is, the only way you learn how to throw a, a pocket pass or how to run a pick and roll, how to defend a pick and roll, how to defend when you're off the ball. Let's say you're, the ball is on the other side of the court and you're guarding the man who's in the opposite corner. Do you know where you need to be? Do you know how to see the man and the ball at the same time? Do you know what shifts to make, what rotations to make based on how the ball moves? Do you know what to do if you're standing on the wing on the right side on offense and the guy with the ball is on the other side and he drives down to the corner, do you know that you should slide down to the corner to give him an outlet to throw you a pass right there when you may be open for that shot? Do you understand this stuff? If you don't understand these things, you gotta play more games. Now, it can help for you to watch film, watch video of other basketball players play. I'll make a separate video on that because players ask me about that all the time. It can help you to go to the games and watch. It can help you to go find a mentor, a basketball mentor, who can tell you things about the game based on what he sees, based on his experience. I think that can help a lot if you find the right player someone who can actually you can physically talk to like physically speak to them one-on-one -on -one and they can explain things to you on the court maybe even as the game is going on or after a game or you two can watch a game and they can show you the things that they see so that you start to understand it i think that can be a very 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 big benefit for a lot of you basketball players something like that a direct mentorship with a player who can actually play and again i'm gonna make a separate video on that but you got to learn how to play the game of basketball and again if you all your experience is playing pickup ball that may not work. I had a lot of experience playing pickup ball. When I got into playing quote unquote real basketball, I understood how to do real basketball things because I had an innate understanding of what the game is supposed to look like. I don't know why it is. Maybe it's just an ability that I have. I don't know, but I understood what the game was supposed to go like. Despite the fact I had a lot of pickup game experience, I wasn't a pickup game player. I was a guy who knew how to play regular basketball and pickup basketball, even though I was way better in pickup basketball at first until I got better at regular basketball. You got to develop that understanding. How to play basketball combined with talent, you pretty much guaranteed to make the team. Here's the third thing the basketball player needs. You want to make the basketball team, what is the coach looking for at any tryout, any level, high school, college, pro? Coach ability. Coach ability. Is a player coachable? What does that mean, being coachable? That means, now I'm not a coach. I've never been a basketball coach. I will never be a basketball coach. Players, all, sometimes people be saying, Dre, you'd be a great coach. Would you want to be a coach? No, I want to be a coach. I'm not interested in being a basketball coach at all. I like doing this, talking to players, even if it's one-on-one, -on -one, you know, being a personal coach or mentor to players or a virtual coach or mentor to players. I like doing this. But being on a team and coaching the team every game and dealing with the parents and the fans, and no, not for me. Anyway, coachability means are you able to be coached? That's what coachability Are you coach? able 
can someone coach you? Can a coach yell at you when you messed up and you accept it and then get it right the next time? Or when the coaches yell at you, do you put your head down and make it even worse play the next time? Or when the coach yells at you, do you just mentally check out of the game and stop playing hard? Or when the coach yells at you, do you yell back and tell him why you were right and he was wrong? What do you do when a coach yells at you? What do you do when a coach pulls you out of the game? Do you feel like you're too good to come out of the game? Do you feel like the players on your team are not good enough to be playing with you? Do you look at the person who's coming in the game for you and be like, oh, he coming in for me? Or do you have that? And you might not personally say it, but is it, is it something someone can read in your body language? Do you think you're too good for anything? Or do you think you're too good to run an extra suicide? Do you think you're too good to be playing with these guys? Do you think you're too good to come out of the game for that person? Do you think you're too good to be the one setting the screen instead of the one getting the ball to take the shot? Are you a coachable basketball player? Which means, will you do what you are told based on what the coach says? Because let me give all of you a secret. At the levels of high school and college, especially, this is guaranteed, high school and college level basketball, the coach is in charge. You're not in charge. The coach is 100% in charge, meaning if push comes to shove and a, a power struggle between you and the coach, you gone. You in high school and there's a power struggle between a player and the coach, I don't care if you're averaging 30, you're done. In college, if there's a power struggle between the player and the coach, I don't care if you're already on scholarship, you're gone. We all understand this, right? Have you ever seen a player win a power struggle with a coach in high school, in college? It doesn't happen. Why? Because the coach is the one with the power. Main reason is the coach is the one making money. In high school, you ain't making no money. College player, you ain't making no money. Now, even in the pros, depending on what level we're talking about, whether we're talking maybe in the NBA, the player can win the power struggle because the player is making more money and they got a longer contract. But at different levels, if you want to play overseas basketball and you start off your career coming out of college, listen, the coach got more power than you especially if we're talking about overseas. I mean, they'll let you go quick. They can find another American player. If I'm talking to the Americans out there or any import. If you're playing in a country you're not from, they can find another one of you. You know how many players want to play basketball professionally in different countries and you want to bullshit with your opportunity? You want to butt head with the coach? Okay, we'll let you go and we'll go replace you with somebody same size as you, same age as you, same position as you who wants the job. You don't want it? Okay, we'll get somebody else who does. You're not going to win that power struggle. Nobody, I, ne I never heard of an overseas team firing a coach to appease a player who was an import player from another country. I've never heard of that. And if any of you know a personal, personally know a situation that happened, let me know. All right, so besides the NBA, I, even in, I would even say in the D-League. I never played in the D-League, but besides the NBA, anywhere else you play basketball, if there's a power struggle between you and the coach, you are gone. Okay, which means at tryouts, do you display coachability? When a coach says do this, when a coach, the person running your team at the tryout says do this, are you able to be coached? Are you bad mouthing your teammates? Are you yelling at your teammates? Is your body language sagging when your teammate messes up or when somebody doesn't pass you the ball? Do you start playing selfishly when you feel like you're not getting the ball enough? Do you show up your teammates, i.e. your teammate makes a mistake on the court and then you yell out something to make him look even worse even though everybody in the damn gym can see he made a mistake? Do you go say something that makes him look even worse to verbalize his mistake when it's obvious he already made the mistake? Do you do things like that? These little things that you think nobody is noticing, coaches notice these things. A coach is trained to notice the little things. So if the coach is not like you, basketball player. Us players, we watch the game, what are we watching? We watching the ball, we watching the guy with the ball, we watching the move he did, and we thinking about all that. The coach is watching everything other than the ball. Coach is watching the body language of the guys who don't have the ball. Coach is watching the body language of the players on the bench who are not in the game. Coach is watching the Facial expressions of the players when something happens in the game that they know is going to get a response. What's your response? And those little things, coaches notice them. It could be the littlest thing that you don't even think anybody saw. You rolling your eyes because your teammate didn't pass it to you, or your teammate turned the ball over, or your teammate got scored on, and you yelled at him to show him up to make yourself look like a leader in front of everybody. Do you think that made? Do you think that helped your cause or hurt your cause? Are you a coachable player or are you not? Because I guarantee. The smallest thing can keep you from making a team and then you're, I don't know why I made a team. No, you know why. <laughs> Maybe you're not going to tell anybody why. You can act like you don't know why, okay? Act like you don't know why. That ain't going to change the fact that you didn't make it. <laughs> all right, you can come on, on the internet and talk all day, but you don't know why you didn't make the team. Leave it in the comments and complaining bitches to me. That ain't going to change the fact that you didn't make the team. Now, I guarantee you it's one of these four things that caused you to not make it. And I'm going to tell you exactly how to fix all of these four. So let's go to number four. So we got number one, talent. Number two. Can you play basketball? Number three, are you coachable? Here's number four, need. Need means the coach is coming in looking for, I need a big man. 
coach is coming and looking for, I need an outside shooter. I need a ball handler, somebody who can play point guard. I need a swing man who can defend multiple positions and who can kind of drop to the basket and play above the rim and just be an athletic kind of all around type of guy. I need a garbage man rebounder who will throw his weight around the paint, throw some elbows, uh, bruise with the other bruiser on the other team, be the enforcer we need, can set strong, solid screens, just grab a bunch of rebounds and be happy if he don't score no points all game and still be a productive player and work hard all game even though he knows he ain't going to get the ball and score no points to get none of the glory. I need a player like that. Coaches go into tryouts knowing what they need with an idea, maybe a general idea of what they need. If you can fill one of those roles as a need, you'll make the basketball team. First basketball team I ever made, coach's name is Steve. This is in at Finley Playground in Mount Airy. If any of you from Philadelphia, you know Mount Airy. And Steve said at tryouts, first day of tryouts, he was like, this is what I need. Because it was like 20 people trying out. He was like, listen, if you got talent, you got a chance to make this team. But I'm also looking to fill certain needs on this team. If anybody in here, because he had us all lined up on the baseline, you know how the coach does. If any of y'all in here fills one of these needs, you're going to make this team. And then he, he laid it down what it is. He said, I need a point guard. That means I need someone who can handle the ball, get from point A to point B, and run our offense. And he said, I need a shooter. I need a lights out shooter, somebody who can catch that ball outside that three point line and knock down shots. And the defense knows they have to respect those people. That was actually my, my job. That's the, the role that I ended up filling. I wasn't trying to, but it, that ended up being a role that I could fill because that was actually the only skill I had back then was to stand there and shoot. I couldn't dribble, I couldn't play defense. I didn't know how to run offense. I didn't know nothing. He said, I need a garbage man. He didn't say that first. He said, I need someone who will grab rebounds, throw his weight around, set screens, and not score too many points, AKA a garbage man. He said, I need a center, somebody who can block shots, somebody who can score in the post, somebody who can basically draw the attention of the defense down low. If any of you, after he said those four things, he said, if anybody in here can fill one of those roles, you're gonna make this basketball team. Now, it doesn't mean that you gotta fill one to make the team, but if you do fill one, you're definitely gonna make the basketball team. And I think damn near every basketball team is looking for something like that in some ways. I mean, the game is changing, of course, with the different sizes, but that's not even the point of this video. So I'm not here to belabor that point. The fact is, coaches know, have a general idea of what they need. So a coach may come into trial saying, I need a point guard, I need a shooter, I need a swing man, I need an athletic guy, I need a, a ball stopper, a defensive stopper on defense, not a ball stopper like a guy who don't pass, but a defensive stopper on defense. I need a center who can shoot three pointers and who can score with his back to the basket. I need a big guy who can guard guards and guard big men in the paint. I need a big guy who can switch on the pick and roll and guard a little guard like Stephen Curry. I need something like that. So coaches come into trials with an idea of what they need. But again, needs is fourth on the hierarchy. I'm telling you why they're fourth on the hierarchy because if I got a team with three point guards already and they all all-stars all making a hundred million dollars and Steph Curry and Chris Paul come to my tryout, they still gonna make the team. Even though they don't fit need, because why? Need is fourth in the hierarchy. Number one is talent. Oh yeah, they making the team. Oh, and they can play? And they're coachable? Oh, they definitely making the team. <laughs> they're making the team. So what's the third one? Third one is, wait, where are we at? Can play coachability. If a player has a whole lot of talent and they know how to play and they're uncoachable, guess what? You pretty much still got a chance to make the team. <laughs> how many of you ever played with somebody who had a lot of talent and they knew how to play, but they were really uncoachable? They were kind of a jerk, kind of an asshole player. You didn't really like them on a personal level, but you damn well knew they could get you 20 points. You knew they could get you 15 rebounds. You knew they was going to get 15 assists, even though they were kind of a jerk and you really didn't like them on a personal level. But guess what? They were still on that team. <laughs> they used to argue with the coach. Coach used to get mad at them. Guess what? They were still on that team. Why? Talent. Talent, and they knew how to play. If you have talent, that will outweigh everything else on this list. If you have talent and you can't play, you're uncoachable, and you don't feel the need, but you have talent, oh, you're making a team. I'm just telling you straight up. If you can play basketball, if you can play very well, but you're uncoachable and you don't really feel a need, you're still going to make the team, in my opinion. And again, this is a general, general consensus not consensus, general assessment of what's gonna happen for you. Again, every team is unique. I'm gonna get into that in a minute. If you are coachable, but you don't feel a need, coach is gonna find a place for you on the team. If you're coachable and you can play, right, you gotta be able to play. Don't just be a, a coachable bum. All right, coachable bums, you're not making a basketball team. All right, you gotta be able to play. Be coachable and be able to play. Have this combination and coaches will find a place for you, okay? Coaches will find a way to make it work with you if you're coachable and you can play. Now, if you're coachable and you can't play and you ain't got no talent, work on your game. All right, I got enough videos out here for you. Hoophandbook.com, all the workouts, all the workouts and drills. 
so everybody understand what I'm saying here. Now let me give a disclaimer. Every basketball team is unique. Every overseas team, every college team, every high school team is unique because every team is coached by a different person. There ain't no coach out there coaching a high school team and a college team at the same time, at least not that I know of. I ain't no coach coaching a pro team and a college team at the same time, at least not that I know of. Which means every team has a different coach. Every coach can do things as he or she sees fit. Meaning, one coach might want a team of smaller people. They just don't want no big people. Another coach might want more people with more size or just a, a heavier, a heavier, uh, what's the word, distribution of bigger people or heavier distribution of smaller people or whatever the situation of shooters, of ball handlers, of all around guys who can play multiple positions. Every coach can run a tryout, can run a team how they want. Thusly, every coach can run a tryout how they want. So when I say this video is what to expect at tryout, some of you may have been thinking, well, we, I thought you were going to say, Dre, like what drills are the coaches going to do or what warm ups are they going to do? Here's what, I gotta, here's what I can tell you, and this is maybe good news for some of you, bad news for others. You never know what the coach is going to do at tryouts. You never know what a coach is actually going to have you do at tryouts. You don't know what the warm-up is going to be. You don't know what drills they're going to have you do. You don't know if it's even going to be a five-on-five -five scrimmaging or whatever the situation is. Most of the time it is, but not all the time. I've been to tryouts where there was no scrimmaging. I've been at tryouts where the coach didn't even put the basketballs on the court. All we did was do drills like suicides, running, and stuff like that for a week just to see who wanted to be on the team and who didn't. And guess what? The team pretty much showed itself because people just stopped showing up. Like, yo, we ain't playing no ball. We ain't playing no pickup. I don't want to be on the basketball team. They just quit. The team selected itself. You never know what the coach is going to do at tryouts. So if you thought this video was me just telling you what drills to get ready for or what, uh, let's say that I say the coach is going to have you do five on five. What you going to do to get ready for it? <laughs> Go play more five on five. You was already doing it. Coach is going to have you do drills to show your game. What you going to do to get ready for it? Go work on your game? You should have been doing that already. Just because if I come in here and tell you the coach is going to have you do a three-man weave, what are you going to do? You're going to go grab, grab two of your friends and practice the three-man weave? What do you need to practice it for? All oh, this is passing and running and making a layup. Don't you already know how to do that? <laughs> are those new skills to you? If that's a new skill to you, then guess what? You ain't going to make the team anyway because you can't play and you ain't got no talent. All right, <laughs> you might be coachable, you ain't going to make the team anyway. All right, so I want to make sure I put that all out there. I know I put that at the end of the video, but should, you should have stayed and watched the whole video and get this anyway. You do not know what a coach is going to have you do at tryouts. Okay, so this is not a, they're going to do this, then this, then this, then this. Listen, if you can play, it don't matter what they have you do, because guess what? A player with talent is going to be obvious. A player who can play is going to be obvious. A player who's coachable, coachable will be obvious. And if you fit the need, it's going to be obvious through all these other three things. Everybody got that. I think I covered pretty much everything you need for trying out for a basketball team. I think I left no stone unturned. If there's something that I didn't say, leave it in the comments and let me know. If this helped you in any way, leave it in the comments and let me know. And if there is a question that I didn't answer, something that I didn't say about tryouts, again, I already said that, I'm gonna say it again, leave it in the comments and let me know. But I think I pretty much covered everything. Now, if you leave it in the comments and you say something that I already covered in the video because you didn't watch it and or you didn't listen, I know that happens often with people on the internet. I'm not saying you, but people on the internet, it happens. I will also let you know that. Everybody, work on your game. Hoophandbook.com if you need drills, if you need to get some, your skills up, you need to get your game up. And guess what? Every player out there, you need to get your game up until you decide to quit. Work on your game. DreAllDay.com.